The tides were due to the pull of the moon on the earth. This had sometimes been thought of before with the difficulty that if it's the pull of the moon on the earth, the earth being here, the water's being pulled up to the moon, then there would only be one tide a day where that bump of water is under the moon. But actually, you know, there are tides every 12 hours roughly, and that's two tides a day. But you must, there was also another school of thought that had a different conclusion. Their theory was that it was the earth that was pulled by the moon away from the water. So actually, Newton was the first one to realize what actually was going on, that the force of the moon on the earth and on the water is the same at the same distance, and that the water here is closer to the moon, and the water here is further from the moon than the earth, than the rigid earth, so that the water is pulled more toward the moon here, and here is less toward the moon than the earth, so there's a combination of those two pictures that makes a double tide. Actually, the earth uh, does the same trick as the moon, it goes around a circle, really. I mean, the force of the moon on the Earth is balanced, but by what? By the fact that just like the moon goes in a circle to balance the Earth's force, the Earth is also going in a circle. Actually, the center of the circle is somewhere inside the Earth. It's also going in a circle uh, to balance the moon. So the two of them go around a common center here. And if you wish, this water is thrown off by centrifugal force more than the Earth is, and this water is attracted more than the average of the Earth. At any rate, the tides were then explained, and the, and the fact that there were two a day. How'd you do it? Come on. You have order in this universe. You have an order in the universe. Tide comes in, tide goes out. Okay, yeah, the moon does it. Fine. How'd the moon get there? Who put it there? Did it just happen? Okay, if we have existence, if we have life on Earth, how come they don't have it on the other planets? Were we just lucky? Some meteor do this? Come on. You know, I, I see this stuff, it's desperate. As I've said many times, it takes more faith to not believe and to think that this was all luck, that every, all this human body, the intricacies of it and everything else, all luck, than it does to, to believe in a deity. Incidentally, at the time of uh, Kepler, the problem of what drove the planets around the sun was answered in sun, in sun, by some people by saying that there were angels behind here beating their wings and pushing the planet along around orbit. As we'll see that that answer is not very far from the truth, the only difference is that the angels sit in a different direction and their wings go in. <laughs> but the point that the angels sit in a different direction is the one that I must now come to. Now, then Newton saw from this that, for instance, to take a simple example, if a planet is going in a circle around the sun, no force is needed to make it go sideways tangentially. If there were no force at all on it, it would have just keep coasting this way. But actually, the planet doesn't keep coasting this way, but finds itself later not out here where it would go if there were no force at all, but further down toward the, the sun. In other words, its velocity, its motion, has been deflected toward the sun. So what the angels have to do is to beat their wings in toward the sun all the time, that the motion to keep it going in a straight line has no known reason. The reason why things coast forever has never been found out. The law of inertia is no known origin. So the angels don't exist, but the continuation of the motion does. But in order to obtain the falling operation, we do need a force.